Hello everybody, as we continue in our little midweek series looking at the Westminster uh, Confession of Faith, uh, we come now to the third part of the first chapter. It talks about the Word of God and tonight our, our, our subject is the Word of God and the Apocrypha. The Westminster Confession of Faith was uh, came into being in 1646. Uh, it focuses primarily on its introduction, as does the Catechism on the Word of God. And uh, this is what it says concerning the Apocrypha. The books commonly called the Apocrypha, not being of divine inspiration, are no part of the canon of Scripture and therefore are of no authority in the Church of God, nor to be uh, any otherwise approved or made use of than any uh, than any other human writings. I wonder, I wonder, do you have a favourite book? Is there a book that you return to again and again? One I enjoy reading is a book Silas Marner. It was written by uh, George Eliot, who was actually a woman, Mary Jane Evans, but couldn't publish under a woman's name in the nineteenth century. And uh, it's a, an interesting story. It's a story of a man who's rejected by a religious community. He's driven out. Uh, he's received into a little village and he weaves there and becomes a miser and focused on his money. He brings his money out and he, he wastes his life really pursuing uh, the gold that he can gather up around him. Uh, and one night he's robbed and uh, he's devastated, of course. But shortly afterwards, a little child miraculously comes into his life. He finds her under, under a bush in a snowstorm. And this little child uh, transforms his life. It's really a story of her, someone who's an outcast is brought inside. It's, it's, a, it's a redemption story in that sense. And so it, it resonates with me and with many other Christians as well, because it, it, it has this almost biblical theme about it. There are, there are other, of course, books that are useful to us and helpful to us. Uh, I enjoy the writings of R.C. Sproul. Uh, the Holiness of, Holiness of God was, was one of the books I first read uh, that R.C. Sproul had written. And it really, it really challenged me and, and uh, enthused me about the nature and character of God and the work that he does in the gospel. There are lots of, lots of books that are helpful to us, lots of Christian books. But these books that we find here that are called the Apocrypha are part of, of what's included in the Old Testament of the Catholic Bible. These seven books that we have here that were written during the intertestamental inter period. That's a hard one to say. Uh, probably during the period 300 to 30 B.C. So before Christ came in and, and after the end of Malachi, when we talk usually in, in the Reformed tradition about the 400 years of silence before Christ appears, a distance from the prophets into the, into the New Testament. There are historical books. There's Tobit. There's Judith, First and Second Maccabees. It deals with a, 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 re, a rebellion against uh, the authorities. Antiochus, uh, who is a who is a pagan general, uh, comes in and he desecrates the temple in Jerusalem. And it's a story told there of the rebellion of the Jews and how they sought to rededicate the, 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 the temple. Uh, uh, it's actually remembered in Jewish history through the Festival of Lights, Lights, Hanukkah, the rededication of the temple at that time. There's also books that are called wisdom books. We have those as well in the Old Testament. We think about the wisdom of of. Uh, uh, the book of Proverbs uh, and things like that, Ecclesiastes. Well, there are, there are wisdom books as well, a book called Wisdom and also one called Ecclesiasticus, not to be confused with Ecclesiastes. It's a different book altogether. And there's a prophetic book that's included as well in the Apocrypha, uh, attributed to Baruch. Over the history of the church, uh, these books have been revered at some point and then uh, tolerated. And, and ultimately, come the Reformation, they were rejected. The, uh, the, the Confession of Faith talks about them not being of divine inspiration, but of human origin. They're not the word of God. Indeed, within them are contained doctrinal errors. The, 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 the contents of these books have been used to promote uh, uh, errors such as praying for the dead uh, and purgatory 
and also salvation by works that we know is contrary to what the, the scriptures teach us because it's all about grace and always has been about grace from the garden right through to the gospel to the present day. We don't earn our salvation. It's the gift of God. The Reformation came along and its focus was on the Word of God primarily, as I said, the confession looks uh, initially at the Word of God rather than the character of God that many uh, other confessions of faith look at, uh, the, the, the Westminster Confession of, of 1646 looks at the Word of God and tries to underline, underline its importance right from the get-go. Now, of course, you can imagine during the time of the Reformation, the Catholic Church didn't just sit back and take all this uh, lightly. There came into being what was known as the Counter-Reformation, where the Catholic Church sought to reinstate its authority and, and state again its beliefs and what it believes. There was a council held called the Council of Trent that, that took place over uh, a, a number of years from uh, 1545 through to 1563. And it was a response to Luther and other uh, reformers and what they were saying and how it differed from what the, the, the Catholic Church was teaching at that time. And indeed, in the Council of Trent, the, uh, the, the, the authorities there made a statement concerning the Apocrypha and its importance and how they felt uh, it was important uh, not, to, not to set it aside or reject it. Listen to what it says in the Council of Trent here. If anyone receive it not, a sacred and canonical, the said books entire with all their parts, as they have been used to be read in the Catholic Church, and as they are contained in the old Latin Vulgate edition, and knowingly and deliberately condemns the traditions aforesaid, let him be anathema. They pronounce an, an anathema upon anyone who rejects the, the Apocrypha, let that person be damned is what they're saying really there. Now, the Westminster Confession of Faith does not ban the Apocrypha as such. It doesn't say we're not to go near it. It underlines the fact that it's not divine. It's not breathed of God. It's not authoritative. It doesn't have the authority of the Word of God. It's not scriptural. It comes from the hearts of men, the observations of men. There may be true things in it in the historical sense, but it's not the word of God. Books today, of course, are still published uh, to do with Christi the Christian faith and Christian ethics and all sorts of things. And we need to be careful with them as well. We need to remember that no matter how good these books are, and I've mentioned some of them, they're not the word of God. There can be mis mistakes in them. And as we look and we read books that may be helpful to us, we need to accept uh, and be understand that they're supported by the proper interpretation of Scripture and the application of that to our lives. We have 66 books in our Bible, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New. That is the Word of God as we understand it in the Old and New Testaments. And it's the rule that God has given us to direct and guide us how we may glorify and enjoy him. And the scriptures principally teach what, what man, what humankind is to believe concerning God and what duty God requires of us. It's a rule of faith and practice, if you like, for us. It's the word of God. There's a little word that appears in 2 Timothy, I think it's in chapter 3 and verse 16. And it talks about all scripture being God breathed. You, you'll maybe know the verse, it's useful for teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training in righteousness. But the little verse there, that, that, the little word that's used, it's not a little word, it's a big word. God breathed is actually a Greek word. Not that I'm any sort of Greek scholar, but it's the word theonumatos. The God, pneumatos, it's the word for pneumatic, you know, for an air filled tire. So it's actually that God has breathed it out. It's expired by God. And that's what we believe concerning the, the, the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. They're given to us through the, the, the pen of, of human beings, but given by inspiration of God. We do not believe this in the Reformed tradition to be true of the Apocrypha. It's, 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 it's a collection of books that have been there historically, but have not proved 
to be the word of God. And therefore, in the words of the uh, confession of faith, we are uh, enabled to make use of them, but only as any other human writings, because they are not of divine inspiration and are no part of the canon of scripture and therefore are of no authority in the church of God.